Hey everyone, welcome. We're live. Uh, we've sorted out all of our internet issues. It seems like we're really good to go. We've spent like the last week kind of tweaking and having ISP people come in um, to uh, to try and solve them for us, and it looks like it's worked. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, as we mentioned in our last live stream and on our little chat with uh, Neurarchy, we've actually um, started a uh, collaboration uh, with WizKids. And so we have some pretty awesome content coming to you guys in the next couple months. No details just as of yet, but stay tuned. We're going to definitely let you know as soon as we have more of those details. The other awesome partnership that we've struck is with Vallejo Paints. They just sent us a ton of awesome uh, product that I honestly couldn't wait to uh, dive into today. Uh, and so we're doing a surprise live stream tutorial for you guys. We're going to be painting uh, the WizKids Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures um D, D griffin uh he's really awesome i got a a request um from one of the viewers uh in order to do it so we're gonna dive right in right in i'm gonna dive into this vallejo paint range so it's gonna take a little bit more time to kind of get used to it and um kind of figure out all of the awesome options that they have we have used vallejo paints here uh before um but not to this level so we're super excited they make incredible product we're also going to use vallejo brushes um, and show you all of them and how they work. So let's uh, let's dive right in here. First things first, we're actually going to grab the uh, Vallejo game color kind of uh, sheet that they sent me along here with kind of like their full paint list, um, which we have access to all of. Uh, and I'm just going to place that out here so that I can take a look at it and find out exactly what we need to do here. Um, all right, so first things first, let's uh, choose a brush. I'm gonna use their uh, Torre line. Um, there's a number of them uh, they sent us to, to try, uh, and we're gonna try the uh, number two right now um, for a base coat. And uh, they suggest that these are great for miniature painting, especially with the game color line, so that's what we're gonna use. Make sure that you guys sign off in the comments um, we're live on Facebook and Twitch and YouTube all at the same time, all simultaneous. So definitely let me know that you guys are here. We want to make sure that you uh, sound off, that we know where you're from, uh, where you're tuning in from. And uh, any thoughts or questions or feedback that you have on our process, please don't hesitate to ask. All right, so looking at this Griffin here, I think we're going to um, start with kind of the yellow... Um, Hey, John, good to see you. Good evening, sir. I think the ISP goblins have run in fear um, and just in time for our new Vallejo paint range, so we're really excited. Uh, this model uh, didn't need a lot of cleaning. There's a couple little spots here and there, um, but I'm not super concerned about that at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to ignore some of that stuff. Um, again, these WizKids minis, uh, for the price that they are um, and the value that you get, the pretty... Pretty stinking awesome. Uh, sometimes you'll have to take a little bit of a, of a hobby knife or a mold liner remover to it to remove some of the kind of sharp edges or whatever the case may be. But uh, in this case, uh, he's all right. So we're going to start off. I'm going to jump right in here to this Vallejo game paint range. Um, maybe I'll give you guys a quick look at what we've got here. Um, All right, so first things first, there it is. There is the line of paints that we got sent. That's the game color line. We're going to try and stick uh, solely to that line. Um, and then we are going to use some of the washes from uh, some of the other lines. Oh, uh, it's actually the game uh, the game line. And then we'll jump into the, some of the model line stuff um, a little later. Uh, but for right now, we're going to focus on the... Uh, on the paints themselves to get some of this uh, to get some of this going. All right. All right. So first things first, base coat. We're gonna jump right in, and we're actually gonna use the heavy okra. Um, and I love these little dropper bottles. They come in. Um, it makes it super easy to not waste paint. Um, a little bit in our palette there. 
It is a little thick, so I'm going to water it down a little bit with some water here. All right, here we go. Look at that. It goes in nice and smooth. It's a little thick for my liking, so we're just going to water that down a little bit. And we're just going to add a healthy base coat. Man, I'm loving these brushes already. Heavy base coat of this heavy okra. And it's uh, the coverage is really great so far. And obviously that whole back area, you can see of the griffin, uh, being kind of the lion body, um, we'll get kind of this treatment here. Make sure you guys check out our last live painting tutorial. We painted the troll that you see back here. Um, and our producer and dear friend Joel um, joined us for that one. It was a lot of fun. Uh, make sure you check it out. Lots of antics. We're going to try and get Joel to join us for a lot of these. Um, we're probably going to do them every other Monday nights on the nights that we don't have our live stream to give you guys even more content that you can enjoy on those off weeks. This Monday, we've got our live stream as well. Make sure that you guys tune in at um, 7 p.m. Eastern while me and a bunch of my buddies play D&D &D in our game cave. We're going through the Storm King's Thunder campaign currently. Oh, got some fluff there. Hey, James. Uh... Welcome to the party, as you put it. Um, we're painting the WizKids Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures uh, Griffin today with uh, Vallejo Paints. All right. We're going to get right in there. Be sure you... Um, Tag uh, people that you think would uh, enjoy this in the chat or invite them out. We'd love to, to have them out tonight for this impromptu surprise tutorial session. Right on. It is a Friday night here in the, in the house, so definitely bear with some of the Screaming kids and banging and <laughs> horseplay that occurs. We have five kids in the house, so there's no corralling that. That's right, you heard me, five kids. All right. All right, this game color is going on really nice. Don't even know if I'll need multiple coats of this heavy okra. I think we're doing all right. All right. Now what I am going to do is I'm also going to put heavy okra here on the talons. Um, and then what I'm going to end up doing is probably washing the talons and the back end, the lion end of the griffin, with different... Um, washes to give it a bit of a different uh, tone as well as highlight it with a uh, more muted tone for the lion for the back of the uh, of the of the griffin I wanted to make sure that I kind of just jumped in here I didn't want to plan out my paints too much even though you want to absolutely make sure you do that I wanted to kind of just experiment um, and kind of take you through that process of trying to determine what colors to use and even sometimes when you make a mistake or use a color that you think, ah, you know what, I really shouldn't have used that one. It doesn't necessarily go, the, or di didn't necessarily go on the way I expected it to. Um, you can, uh, how you kind of backtrack or change gears if you need to. No worries, John. Uh, you can uh, always catch our live streams afterwards. As you know. Now that our ISP issues are, are fixed, we can actually repost the uh, last week's session which which was um which we had to record unfortunately and then stream after so we'll still be doing that ahead of monday we're trying to all 
Anybody else that out there use uh, use Vallejo, the Vallejo line? Um, I'm assuming that's a, that's a yes. Uh, obviously quite common. Um, but uh, if you do, what are your favorite colors? What's your favorite range? Do you guys like the game color range? Uh, do you prefer the model color range? What's your... What's your range and what are your colors of choice out of the Vallejo line? All right. Cool. Awesome. That's a good start. And hey, we've got the base coat of that heavy okra down. I really am loving these brushes, guys. They're pretty awesome so far. I'm just using the large, once again, the Vallejo P54 number two Torre brush. Um, and again, these are kind of like the, the game color or what they suggest for miniature painting. We're gonna find a color here now to base coat all of the brown feathers. And it's obviously gonna be a very liberal kind of approach to that let's see here uh any thoughts anybody i'm thinking charred brown as a base but if anybody else has any thoughts definitely let me know there's also a heavy sienna that i see here Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use my heavy sienna. We're going to try that. <laughs> Crayon. Hey, buddy, everybody's got to start somewhere. <laughs> Mr. X. Citadel has great paints. That's what I've used for years. Um, in amongst my Vallejo stuff. Um, but... Uh, but the good people of Vallejo are taking really good care of us, so. And they've got really great product. Anybody on Facebook, make sure that you sound off. Sometimes the Facebook chat kind of goes behind. Yeah, I'm thinking a, a reddish brown too. Uh, this heavy sienna has a bit of red in it, James, so I think that's what we're going to go with here. Let's see. Yeah, that's great. That's a good color. And uh, as we did with the troll, we're trying to paint um, these minis to match kind of the color scheme in the Monsters Manual. Trying to stay true to canon, as it were. And these paints go on actually quite thick. I didn't expect them to be as thick as they are. That's good, um, especially when you're base coating. But I also want them to flow. So we're just going to water them down every time they come out of the pot. I do the same thing with GW paints. And when you get to the edge here near the talon, I'm just going to kind of feather as I go to make that not a hard break. Also want to try and not hit these feathers on the head, it's gonna look almost like a bald eagle, right? That's that's the that's kind of the approach or the look we're going for. So we're just gonna do this and kind of feather it. Even if there isn't a feather line there, we're just gonna kind of pull the paint down to give it a neat little feathered approach. Ah, see what I did there? <laughs> All right. What was the last mini that you guys painted? Love to hear from you guys. All right. Go around the griffin. John, what did you say that you're playing on uh, Monday night? What was it? Green Horde. Is it really bad that I haven't heard of that? Can you tell me what that's all about, John? 
I'm assuming it has to do with orcs. Do I have to turn in my geek card if I don't know what that is? All right. I'm sure you guys can hear the kids in the background upstairs playing Xbox on their devices. Typical Friday night activities. All right. All right, so we're doing all right. It's gone on really thick on the shoulder here, so I'm just going to pull some of that paint down a little bit. I'm going to thin it a bit, and then we're going to push this onto the wings here. And if we get a little bit on the uh, on the kind of the, the lighter head feathers, that's okay. Um, not too worried about it because uh, we're going to end up base coating that area anyways. It's just with a with such a dark brown surrounding it. Sometimes you'll have to put like more coats, obviously more coverage to cover that brown uh, on that on that light area. So we don't want to do that. So far, I'm loving these paints and this brush. Pretty awesome. It's kind of like Christmas today when I came home and saw that the Vallejo shipment had arrived. Very excited. Yeah, I really like how that brown's going on. Like I said, what I am going to do is that that back end, uh, the kind of the the lion end. Oh, it's patchy on the bottom there. I'm going to have to add another coat there. Um, it's pretty yellow. Um, we're going to use kind of muted, highlighted, kind of more muted yellow tones to highlight. down a bit wolf tribe from the blood rage tabletop game nice Oliver right on I don't know if that's how you pronounce your name definitely let me know I tend to murder names on here sometimes uh it's homicide yeah of course right on Love to hear what you think of it, John. Some besides, pretty awesome. All right, let's get this burnt sienna all up in there. A lot of brown on this mini. All right. Tell you, it took. Jeez, we've been we've been fighting with internet bandwidth for the last. I don't know. Joel's on the stream now. Our producer. I don't know. Four months. Four or five months even. Couldn't get a solid stream, kept dropping, bandwidth is bad. And then uh, finally the last tech to kind of come in said, oh, uh, we noticed that one of the lines is kinked in the panel. One of the cables. <laughs> and so we fixed that. And since then, that was a couple days ago, since then we've got like the best stream yet. Oh, Olafur. Good pronunciation. All right. I like that. Do you have a, a short form of that? The kids are eerily quiet. That always worries me. All right. Here we go. Oh, there they go. Never mind. I take it back. <laughs> 
I could have totally done his beak while I was doing his talons. Didn't think of that. Should have. Didn't. It's a lot of brown here. What are you guys up to right now? Anybody else crafting? On a Friday night? What's everyone else up to? I'm giving this burnt this uh this heavy sienna some serious work. I'm so excited to really dig into this paint line over the next couple weeks. Like I said, we're really excited to bring you guys some crazy content from WizKids and Vallejo in the next little while. Well, hopefully for a while, but it'll start dropping hopefully in the next three weeks. Can't wait to tell you everyone about it officially. All right. Undersides are almost done. It's uh, the coverage on this on these heavy paints is pretty awesome. Um, I don't know, I, I'm assuming the heavy ones are um, kind of your base paint versions um, in the Vallejo line. Those of you that, that have used the Vallejo game color line may know better, but they, they're awesome. They're doing exactly what they should do, which is provide really solid, solid coverage Black Magic Craft Tiles. I was just talking to Jeremy yesterday. He has some great content. Actually, that's a good opportunity to shout out some some channels. Check out... Um, I mean, I'm sure all of you have heard of Jeremy Pillipow and his Black Magic Craft uh, channel. But definitely check him out. He's got some awesome stuff. And he was fellow Canadian. So um, there's that connection. Um, but uh, he his channel... Um, inspired me to, to start doing what I what I was what I what I'm doing um, for sure. He was probably the biggest inspiration. The quality of his crafting and 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 kind of the end product that comes out. Um, and then through that, I've met so many other awesome creators. Um, John, who is on this screen from from Dungeons and Glue Sticks, makes some incredible foam buildings uh, and terrain. Um, brick by brick, just incredible, incredible stuff. Check out Dungeons and Glue Sticks. And then we've got the Crafting Muse and Vanessa, who I think is in the middle of a game tonight. Says she was going to try and stop by, but definitely check her out, the Crafting Muse. She's got some amazing things. And then recent kind of newcomer to uh, the community and the hobby is um, Land Vader. Uh, and he has trying to remember land vader's lair yeah that's right land vader's lair he's amazing his terrain stuff honestly some of it is pretty groundbreaking and in this community it's been around for a long time and and D has been around and and kind of terrain building tabletop gaming but he's got some amazing stuff um definitely check it out recently he posted um kind of a thatched roof concept off of the crafting muses uh uh, roof tutorial which is awesome but um, my favorite tutorial that he's done that I cannot wait to get to uh, and build some of my own are his fireplaces and all of that kind of stuff definitely check that out it's pretty incredible stuff so much talent in this industry also we did a live chat with uh, Nerdarchy not long ago just talking about what Realmsmith does and and all the wonderful stuff that we have coming. Um, David is a, is, a, is a great guy. I had an awesome time chatting with him. And then, this Sunday night, at 8.30 Eastern, we will be doing a joint bandit painting a live stream tutorial with Nate from WASD20. Really excited about that. So definitely 
Um, definitely tune in to Nate's channel on Sunday night for that. That'll be awesome. Just love to give the love. The, the people in this community are really great. So supportive. All right. We're almost there. There's a lot of brown. I know I'm talking a lot, but I'm just talking through this brown. I love, I honestly truly love the way this this brown is adhering. You can see on the model, it's really solid, really, um, yeah, it's just great. It's really great. I'm not just saying that because I'm partnered with them. I'm, I'm super impressed right now with the quality of, of this line. All right. Of course, all of the uh, all of the WizKids pre, uh, unpainted minis come uh, pre-primed with the Vallejo primer, um, which is why it made a lot of sense for us to kind of collaborate with all th uh, with both of them at the same time. And the people of Vallejo have been super great. <laughs> James, that's good. Where's everyone from? Not seeing any. Uh, oh, there is comments on the Facebook page. I'm not seeing them though. They're not. Uh, they're not showing up. Oh, here we go. Let me just take a look at everybody. Hey, Sean from Arizona. Welcome. Joel's on our producer, of course. David Morin, who plays Balabar in our live stream, he's also here. Hear him. I saw you. Uh, you wowed the, the thing. I'm, I'm glad that you're here. Uh, who run, who won the, the Trolls loincloth? That's a good question. Um, I cannot remember the name, but I will absolutely get back to you guys on that. Perhaps Joel knows who won the, the Trolls loincloth. I'll have to... I'll have to let you guys know. It was a little while ago. Upstate New York, of course. All right. Even thin down, this this heavy this heavy paint is pretty pretty great for coverage. All right. When they say heavy, it's it's definitely comes out heavy. It's nice and thick. Like I'm covering in one in one coat here. It's nice. Oh, got the tail. Use the old eraser finger. It's an ancient secret when painting minis, use your finger. I am going to go ahead and paint. Um, yeah, I'll go brown on the tail as well. On the fur on the end. Just to tie it all together. Again, moving down. Somebody's calling me. Clearly they don't know that I'm streaming. And I'm going to need power for my laptop soon. That was smart. All right, let's see here. Perfect. That's done. I am noticing that I missed some areas, some big areas. Look at that, look on the tail. What? With that heavy okra, so I'm going to go back in there. Fill that in. All right. Okay. Very nice. I think I am pretty much done with the brown. Looking great. I think that is good to go, and I'm going to be... I'm gonna be good to wash that shortly. Uh, I'm finding also the Vallejo paint when it 
when you wash the brush, it like comes right off. It doesn't kind of guck too much in there. It's great. <laughs> Montana, give me you. Uh, Vallejo paints in Canada, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not sure about the States. In Canada, Vallejo paints um, retail for pretty much the same price as, as Citadel. Um, I feel like you get more with Vallejo. Uh, I think they're a little cheaper than Citadel paints. Um, Price-wise, uh, you guys will have to tell me about what the States. <laughs> South Canada, yeah. <laughs> We're all in this together, John. We're all in this together. All right. Sweet. All right, so I'm going to go back in here with that heavy okra. And, um, oh, look at that. I think it's still wet in my palette which is not the case with Citadel paints. I wouldn't be able to do this this long after. Interesting. That's a bonus. Hmm. Very cool. All right, let's just get under here. Fill that color out a bit more. Cover some of the brown areas that I missed, or sorry, that I kind of overpainted. Perfect, done. All right, I'm gonna get a little bit, oh, you know what, while I'm here, I'm gonna do the beak. Welcome to anybody who uh, just joined us. Today we're painting the uh, Nolzer's Marvelous Miniature Griffin from WizKids. And Dungeons and Dragons. And we're using our new, brand new set of Vallejo game paints. Or rather from the game line. And we're really impressed with how they're going on so far. All right. Beautiful. Awesome, look at that. It's getting there. Last thing to base coat is going to be the head. Uh, but before I do that, I am going to get power for my laptop. Again, any comments, thoughts, questions, please don't hesitate to ask. That's what we're here for. If you guys have uh, anything, any miniatures actually that you'd like us to paint next, uh, we've done the troll, we've done a bunch of kind of commoners, um, guards, and dancing girls, and bartenders, and all of that sort of stuff. But if there's anything from the WizKids line that you'd like us to paint, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Okay, so now for the head there, obviously in the uh, in the on the Dungeon Master's guy, uh, sorry, the, the Dungeon Master's guy, on the Monsters Manual, um, he's got a bit of a brown tinge to his head, and I think I'd like to do that. Um, no problem, John. Have a good one, buddy. Thanks for stopping in. All plugged in, we are good to go, folks. All right, so. Um, yeah, I'm thinking I want kind of a, so we have a heavy brown here, let's find out. Again, we're just navigating all these wonderful new paints that we got, so just trying to figure out exactly um, what to do here for. These inks look great too. So let's look here. We're gonna find out what color we're gonna use for the head. 
Maybe like a khaki. What do you guys think? If I go with like a khaki color for a base. That's what I'm thinking. Or heavy brown would actually be a nice base too. Although it might be a little dark. Yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the khaki. Now, we're gonna see the difference between the um, heavy line. Um, between the heavy line and the, and the rest of the line. Okay. Oh, my other camera's a little, uh, it's paused there for a second. We'll fix that later. All right, so uh, let's find that khaki color. Well, let's take a look at this heavy brown because it looks a little lighter than I expected it to be. You know what? We're going to use heavy brown. I lied. This brown looks a bit more like a khaki. Make sure you guys tune in, like I said, Monday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, when we uh, play a live D&D game session in our game cave with my good buddies. Somebody else is calling me. <laughs> um, and then every other Monday that we're not doing our live stream, we'll be doing uh, live painting tutorials. And then stay tuned, because coming up soon... In the next few weeks, I like this color, uh, in the next few weeks, we will be releasing some pretty incredible content from us and um, Vallejo and WizKids all together. Very excited. And because we're kind of impromptu tonight, we're not going to do any giveaways tonight, but we got lots of stuff to give away, folks, so... Make sure you tune into our live stream for that sort of thing, as well as all of our live tutorials moving forward. I really do like the way this color is going on. just makes it a bit more natural. Uh, I could have gone kind of the blue-gray um, direction, but I'm actually kind of wishing that I had used this color on the back end of the Griffin rather than that yellow. But we're going to try and pull that back a little bit using a, uh, a wash. Hopefully we can do that. All right. Under the chin. Around the eyes. Again, make sure you guys let me know uh, of the WizKids line what you guys would like to see us paint in the next while. That would be awesome. Okay. All right. That is done. Man, that heavy paint goes on nice. All right. Very cool. That is pretty much base coated. I don't think we're going to base coat the claws and stuff yet uh, because we're going to give a pretty um, liberal kind of dry brush on some of those areas, I think. And uh, we want to be able to make those claws nice and black and, and crisp. Um, I can't believe that this heavy paint in my palette is still wet. 
That's pretty awesome. I am going to wash now. I'm going to put a, a wash on that uh, on that yellow uh, bottom body area, uh, the the lion area, and I'm going to try and use kind of a a um, muted brown wash. Just looking at the game color washes, maybe the sepia wash I think is going to be the best, and then we'll use umber for the um, for the feathers. So let's find uh, it's a flesh wash. It's not what I want. Umber wash. Bring that out, and um, all right, and the sepia wash. There we go. All right, right on, Ian. What are you painting? If you guys are crafting or painting right now, I'd love to hear what uh, what you guys are working on. All right, so we are going to try and apply this sepia shade. This is a game color wash. Uh, I'm assuming it's much like the um, Games Workshop shades, or it, it's supposed to. It, it follows kind of the same premise. Um, it says it's quick drying. Let's find out how this goes here. A little bit in the palette. It's nice and thick, which is good because I can water it down to my own liking. We're going to try and put it right out of the pot and see how that goes. <laughs> it's nice. Yeah, I don't feel like I have to thin that at all for, for the effect I'm going for. And like I said, then we're going to highlight all the muscula musculature and um, and areas of this lion air, uh, part of the body um, using kind of a more of a muted yellow to bring it back a little bit. Um, I think the heavy umber was a little overzealous. Um, when it comes to lion fur, it tends to be a little muted, right? Yeah, this wash is good. It's, it's, it's working out. Again, with washes, make sure that it doesn't pool in the recesses. You want it to, you know, create natural shade, but you don't want it to muddy things up too much. And you want to basically pull the pigment along the mini and basically control it with your brush. Wiring LED torches into a couple of foam dungeon arches. <laughs> nice, Damien. Love to see that. If you love Underdark, stay tuned, folks. In the next couple weeks, we have some denizens coming your way. It's nice. That uh, the wash is, is quite nice. I'm going to use that same wash on the claws. Look at that. Doing exactly what we needed to. We may actually need to use a, a black wash on that brown on the body, but we're going to we're going to try the uh, uh, the umber wash first to see how that goes. But then we'll probably end up using a darker black wash. And then we're also going to use that wash on the beak. Very nice. Very nice. And then I'm also going to use that wash not there yet, it's still, head is still wet. So we don't wanna do that yet. Well, a bit too much in this area here. So I'll pull some of that out. We don't want it to pull too much there. 
All right, so we'll just wait on that head before we wash that or apply a wash to that. Okay, like I said, it does seem like these uh, these paints are, are staying wet longer. Even without a, a wet palette, this brown is still is still usable. That's pretty awesome. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, they're they're pretty great. Super nice too. Like the the folks of Vallejo were really 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 been great to work with. All right, so. I'm gonna see how this umber wash works. It might not be dark enough. We're gonna test it here on the uh, on the feathers and just see how it how it performs. And um, I think um, I think we're gonna have to go darker, but maybe not. Let's see. Let's see. All right. Yeah. It's just disappearing. It's just kind of washing in with. Thanks, Ian. I'm actually pretty impressed with how quick these washes are drying. Um, they do say, say quick drying on them, and they they're doing just that. They're they're actually drying quite quickly. Um, I'm actually quite impressed. Uh, and the paints are taking they're they're drying on the on the mini quick, but in the palette they're not. It's Pretty awesome. All right, I'm gonna find a darker wash here for this. Uh, I would say sepia and um, kind of your Agrex Earthshade uh, type of wash also, Damien, are my, are my favorites. Obviously your black wash is kind of great for metals and, and, and all of that sort of thing. Um, but those are kind of my top three, my sepia, my Agrax, Earthshade for Citadel, or your Umber for, um, for Vallejo. Um, all right, we got our black wash here. All right. Let's get this into the palette. Now I may need to yeah, I'm gonna have to thin that black wash down a little bit. We don't want it too thick. Um, let's see. Oh, that's awesome. I can already tell that's doing exactly what I needed to. I do find uh, that because um, these come pre-primed, sometimes they're a little slick. So just be careful because the um, the paint sometimes tends to um, kind of rub off the, the corners while you're painting it. Sometimes it takes a little bit of retouching, but there we go. That's just giving some really nice shade in the recesses here for these feathers. It's also breaking up the feathers too. It doesn't look as uniform. It's giving it some variety and texture, which is nice. Ian says, how different are the Vallejo washes compared to the Citadel ones? I've used the Citadel ones, but I'm curious about those that you're using right now. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the Citadel washes are really great. I've used them for years, um, and uh, they're easily, obviously, accessible. Um, I painted Warhammer for a lot of years, so it was just made sense to use Citadel. Um, Honestly, these, in my opinion right now, are just as good. Um, they're going on nice and smooth. Uh, they're not pooling. Uh, I honestly really enjoy This is the first time I've used the Vallejo washes, and I'm, and I'm, I'm quite impressed. So far, highly recommended. Anybody else use um, Citadel or... Vallejo washes. 
Which ones do you prefer? For anybody that just joined us, we're painting the WizKids Nolzer's Marvelous Miniatures Griffin from the D&D line. It's coming along quite nicely, in fact. We're going to try and get it done throughout this stream. I will post pictures afterwards if we're not able to get it all squared away here within kind of the two hour time frame. Yeah, Ian, I, I definitely at least try them. They're, uh, I'm really enjoying them. I'm feeling like you get more in this pot as well than you do on the Citadel line. These, these pots, I'd have to look at the uh, measurements. Maybe uh, somebody in the chat knows, but uh, it seems like you're getting more for your for your money on these, for sure. Look at that. I mean, obviously you can't really see because of the um, the glare, but very nice, very nice indeed. All right. What uh, what game system do you guys play out there? Uh, if you play D and D, what uh, edition? And are there any Pathfinder players in the house? Oh, E and I uh, I play uh, to my chagrin for many years <laughs> because, as you know, Space Marines in the Warhammer world uh, suffered for some time, uh, especially the Black Templar. So I play Black Templar army. Um, I have a pretty um, extensive Black Templar army, as well as um, Grey Knights. I'm a Space Marine player. Tried and true. Still try to play as much as I can. The uh, the group and the buddies that I play with tend to... Uh, they actually live a couple hours away, so we don't get to play as much as I'd like, but... I love Warhammer 40k. It's a it's a really great really great game. And this latest edition is pretty pretty awesome. They've done a lot to make it easier to play, much quicker. And the yeah, the 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 dropper on these um I'll be doing some tutorials that have that where I use my airbrush, and obviously for the airbrush, the droppers, that's where I started using Vallejo stuff because it was so easy to get the color in my airbrush. You know, uh, GW has a has an airbrush line, um, but again, it's in the, in the in their usual pots, so you need a dropper, and then you 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 lose a lot of paint that way, um, and all of that sort of thing. So. Like I said, I will be doing some airbrush stuff, kind of some advanced airbrush techniques in the future for sure. All right, so uh, it's nice. So the 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 wash on the on the lion den um, is uh, has dried. So quick drying it is. It's pretty good. Um, I actually find that they dry faster than GW washes, which is nice. And then um, and this black wash is. Already starting to dry on the back. It's almost dry on that wing. And it looks really great. Really great. So I'm gonna go in now on the head. Now that that heavy, that heavy brown has dried. Nice, Ian. Yeah, I, I never really got into War Machine. I thought about it for a while. But never quite dug in. I'm gonna go back to this um, sepia wash for the feathers on his head. 5e. Yeah, I, I'm loving 5e. Now I can't remember which wash was which. I think this was the sepia. We're gonna we're gonna try it. <laughs> Since it's still wet, I don't need to get any more out of the pot. It's great. But look at that. That's doing exactly what I want it to. Beautiful. 
I'm seriously impressed with these paints. Been painting a long time. Been using Citadel for a very long time. All right. Beautiful. Be sure to invite anybody that you guys think would uh, benefit or enjoy watching us on here today. All right. And then we always post these to uh, our various channels after the fact so that people who missed it can tune in. Man, that, uh, that sepia wash on those talons looks really great. Very impressed. All right. Looking good. Like I said, for some reason, uh, Facebook chat tends to mess up on me a little w once in a while. So hopefully I'm seeing you guys here. Everyone on Facebook, where are you, where are you tuning in from? Vanessa's tuning in. <laughs> I just saw that. That's it from uh, the Crafting Muse. Sean says he's currently painting a mini from Mansions of Madness. Right on, Sean. I don't even know if I've heard of. Ma There's so much to. So much to dig into. I'm just reading, uh, catching up on, on the, um, on the chat here on, uh, on Facebook. It froze up on me. Tyranny of Dragons. We played that for a while. And, um, 20 months. Wow. Yeah, we're, uh, we're working on Storm King's Thunder now with the current group on our live stream. All right, so. Moving this right along, folks, I'm going to um, go on to the lion's kind of the lion back end, and uh, hmm. oh, I forgot to wash the the tail. Let's do that. Man, that's not cool. All right, getting in there. Very excited that our internet seems to be. I'm sure everybody who plays on our stream who's in the chat right now is beside themselves. It's been a it's been a it's been something else. Alright, so I am going to actually kind of I was gonna dry brush the back end of this. It'd be easy to do, but I'm actually I think going to go in and try and kind of uh, layer build up in layers um, instead just to see how it goes on that way because we'll be dry brushing other areas of the miniature so I want to kind of use try to different couple different techniques here um, to see how that goes let's see what do we want to use here it's like a desert yellow leather brown that's cool let's see Heavy golden brown looks good. Let's try that. Let me find that. Heavy golden brown. I think it's a bit more of a muted brown. Yeah, it really does. Um, as soon as you add washes, I always say, almost in every stream, that uh, that's where the magic happens. The, the washes really do a lot to bring out... to bring out the, the, the miniature. Yeah, I'm gonna use this color. Oh, well, that is a little yellow. You know what, I'm gonna use that color on the talons. I'm not gonna use it back here. 
like I said, I'm kind of wishing I used that uh, heavy brown back there um, instead, but that's okay. We live and we learn. It's all part of the process, kind of learning what to do and then how to sort of uh, adjust after to get the appropriate result. So many great colors to go through. It's pretty awesome. You know what? I am going to use that. Just for the sake of time. It is a great color. This desert yellow will be too. I'm going to test the desert yellow here as well. Just to see. <laughs> kind of nutty. Thanks, Joel. <laughs> That's great. All right. I usually spread the word on these painting tutorials ahead of time. So you guys are kind of getting like a little bonus peek at what, what we're doing. Not a lot of people knew about this today, so enjoy that. All right. Um, let's see what this is like. This is a bit better. Yeah, we're going to use that. I'm going to really water it down, though, so that we're going to build this up in layers as much as possible here. Um, when you're trying to brush highlights on like this, um, the more layers, obviously, the more subtle and slowly you'll build that, that gradient, right? Um, basically I'm hitting all the, all the large muscle groups, staying out of the recesses as much as possible and just running kind of a, a watered down Yeah, and this is muting that color down a little bit, which is nice of taking some of that orange out of there, which is what I wanted. And you're basically just doing multiple layers on these big muscle groups. Back of the tail here. And you're basically also taking away some of that muddiness that tends to occur when you apply washes as well. It kind of muddles the, the big area. Some people just like to kind of paint washes into, um, into the recesses. I like to give it kind of a liberal wash. It's just, I find it's a little quicker and easier that way. I'm having to cover this a bit more just because, again, I want to take that, I want to take some of that orangey kind of color away. Good stuff. Well, I think I missed some of the feathers under here. I'll have to go back and touch that up. And I'm watering this down enough almost so that it's a glaze. Because obviously this isn't a natural kind of highlight for the color we started with, so I'm glazing this over, just hoping to kind of like cover a little bit of that earlier color. And as I lose paint or pigment on my brush, 
I can then almost like dry brush it like I am here where not as much pigments going onto the model but I am kind of giving it a bit of a glaze to cover some of that to try and fix up that area like I said these are some of the tricks when you you know add a color that you don't really love and then have to go back and kind of adjust I may have to wash this area again as well but like I said it's part of the process you learn right it's never too late to kind of adjust obviously the earlier you do it the better it is Has anybody else painted this griffin yet? Any things you learned or thoughts or things you did differently with the color scheme, for example? Okay, we're gonna let that dry a little bit and move on to uh, the feathers, which are beautiful um, after they've gotten that wash. Look at that, they look great. Actually, they're still a little wet, so I'm actually going to um, I'm going to highlight the talons first. Okay, I'm going to switch to the triple zero brush, the P54 Torre line, Vallejo. All right, so now what I am definitely going to do is use that. Um, that lighter brown okra kind of color um, but I am going to use the highlight version of it let's take a look here and find it not the heavy skin tone let's see we're gonna go right into like the light light yellows we'll jump ahead a little bit here um, just show you guys kind of a edge highlight sort of approach. Now we're going to water down this sun yellow, super bright. But we're just going to edge highlight these talons because they have so much texture. It's easy to kind of go in there. And all I'm going to do is pick out all these little bridges here. Just like that. And as it dries, it'll be much more subtle. What you can also do is if if your paints are kind of watered down a little bit, you can actually go in here and catch the edges by kind of having it flat like this, and it'll just catch the raised edges. But I'm just going in here. Basically, now you're choosing your light source, which for me on this model is kind of like a general light source from above. So I'm basically just picking out all the areas where the sun or the light would hit. And just giving those talons a nice edge highlight. I'm also going to go in here on the beak. And I'm going to layer in some of this yellow. <laughs> it's funny. Under dark denizens. Yeah, definitely stay tuned, folks. Can't say anything else. We're going to have some under dark goodness very soon. All right. It's really coming along here. Now, what we did on the back actually worked out 
I may end up going back and washing that a little, like I said, adding another shade to that. But All right. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing too is the guys watch these these uh, live tutorials because I give away <laughs> what baddies they're gonna be fighting in the next <laughs> in the next session. So I gotta be careful there. All right, we're gonna do a dry brush, folks. Let's do it. Now we're gonna try. I'm gonna look at the. We actually have a, a dry brush that Vallejo sent us, a specific dry brush brush that we're gonna give a go, literally taking it out of the plastic as we speak. This is the. Vallejo Torre dry brush and it looks pretty cool so we're gonna go in here we're gonna pick a lighter brown to um, highlight the wings with um, they're mostly dry it's a little wet in there but by the time we get there it should be okay um, so I'm just gonna choose a brown to go ahead and highlight all of that with Let's take a look. If we do like a maybe a plague brown or a parasite brown might work. We're gonna use parasite brown. Let's see where we can. This case is big, folks, so just bear with me. It takes a little while to get in here. Ooh, dried blood, that's cool. Beastie brown. That looks pretty cool too. Let's see here. I might just go for it. What do you guys think? It's a nice color. I think that's what I'm going to go with. Tan would be really nice too, actually. I might use tan as kind of like an uh, extreme highlight. I mean, there are some inks in here too, which are really cool. I probably could have used, and flush tone is nice too. I'm actually going to use a dark flesh tone. Uh, it'll bring out that nice reddish kind of color. All right, yeah, that's the color. Beautiful. Let's see how this works. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. Again, with dry brushing, you're Basically loading up your brush and then wiping most of it off. <laughs> Sounds like a waste of paint, but it is not. I'm basically running all over the model here and it's catching all the edges and highlighting those. I may have to go a little, this color is great, but it might be a bit subtle for what I'm going for. So I may need to adjust and go with a lighter lighter brown color in fact that's exactly what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go right to tan
That's a bright color. So let's see how that goes. I'll definitely uh, have kind of a recipe or a, a list of of paints that we use, um, Ian, uh, on our on our pre kind of our production version um, tutorials for sure. That's definitely in the plan. On these, it's a little more difficult because I don't necessarily work out what paints I'll be using ahead of time. Um, the point of tonight was kind of to just jump into the into the product line and work it out as I went, kind of you know, as you guys would just at home. Wow, that's a great dry brush. Very nice. Um, just like you guys would at home, kind of, you know, figuring it out as you go. So uh, for this one, I, I you know, that was kind of in the plan. Um, but for our pre-recorded tutorials, kind of our production tutorials, absolutely. That's something that we're working with. And then we usually, you know, um, we usually post kind of on the screen as we're going. We kind of have which which um, paints we're using as we as we use them on those. Make sure that you check out uh, on our YouTube page and on our Facebook page. We've got a bunch of the tutorials. We painted the, the Rusty Dragon in from WizKids already, um, along with a number of others. And uh, on those, we, we definitely list the paints we use. This is turning out really nice. I'm glad I went to that tan color. Try not to go too heavy here because I don't want to lose all that depth. But there we go. Perfect. Very nice. I may even go in here and um, do go one level higher for kind of the edges, the very edges. Um, what I wanted to do before I did this griffin, which I didn't think of today, I didn't get to, I wanted to kind of look at some reference for eagles. And I know they have kind of like a black pattern on the end of their each feather on their wings. Um, if you guys know what I'm talking about and you guys want to link kind of some reference in the chat, that'd be great. too heavy there again dry brushing if you keep too much pigment on your on your brush you're gonna end up just streaking which you don't want to do that <laughs> totally has a double connotation all right I mean what you wear while you paint is your business I do not judge This dry brush is really turning out nice. This was absolutely the right color for this. Fortunately, on the on the body part, I rushed it a little bit, so it's a little bit more of an overbrush than it is a dry brush, but it's okay. Make sure you get the edges of the wings, just like that. Looking good. Right on. All right. I'd say that kind of mid-tone dry brush is done. Yeah, wouldn't that be great, Damon? It's a great idea. All right, I'm going to look up some reference for eagle wings real quick. Huh. Yeah, 
I could have gone really nuts with the whole pattern on here. I might just use a kind of a black wash on the end to kind of darken the wings because I know usually they go a little darker near the edge and that's I think what I'm going to do but I am going to use kind of maybe even one light, one step up of a lighter color for the very edge of those wings but let's do that wash first um, so I'm going to take a black wash and I'm going to apply it to the edge of the wings and just do it that way so instead of painting it on I'm just going to wash it on. I'm not going to dilute it at all because I want it to be nice and thick. And then we're just going to do this. Just to darken the edges back down. Just like that. Now, perhaps an ink might be better for this because it'll cover kind of the whole surface area. Yeah, exactly, and that's that's what I'm thinking. That kind of approach where you're you're washing the edges to darken them down. This may actually not even be enough to do what I want it to do, but let's find out. We won't know until it dries. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's looking good actually. Maybe not as dark as I I I wanted or hoped. That's okay. I would just do at this stage, um, I would just do additional coats of black on the tips to continue to darken it down. Just like that. Perfect. Yeah, it looks good. Looking good. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. I'll probably just go over with another coat of it after as well. And just kind of like, basically you're feathering further down. Yeah, well, I'm still going to, the, the head is golden, which looks good, but I'm going to highlight that with a pretty light color, Dave, um, right now, actually. So we're going to go in the head with a, a, a much lighter dry brush, not with white, but we will have white out as an extreme highlight, but we need to find something that is kind of a gray color, maybe stonewall gray will do. Let's try that. We do want it to stand out a little different from everything else. Let's see what Stonewall looks like. It's got a bit of sort of brown in it, a bit of an earth, earthy tone. I'm gonna load the brush, wipe off most of the paint, and let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, see how that, oh, again, overbrushing way too much that's the problem with dry brushing is you don't want to you don't want to rush it that's better I may need to go back in there and just touch that you can see that's unsightly I tell you unsightly I plan to probably go back in here anyways and wash the ahead. I'll probably add that brown sepia wash again. But again, that's all part of the process, kind of making those mistakes and learning how to adjust. It's not terrible, but 
but I definitely want the head to be lighter than the rest of the body. Like that. All right. Cool. Now, even still, I'm going to go with even lighter. Um, see if there's like a, a cream color in here. Um, let's see. Arctic white. Uh, you know what? I'm going to use this off white color. Uh, Damien, I. Um, there's lots of, uh, I mean, Badger makes some great airbrushes. Um, and you can get some decent kind of Badger starter airbrushes. I went right with a Grex. Um, Grex is kind of a, a bit of a higher end airbrush. But um, but I knew that if I wanted an airbrush, I wanted one that, that was going to last me. And that as I learned, um, it, would, it would kind of, you know, uh, do what I wanted to do kind of long term. Which is why I went with a Grex. Uh, I love it. Uh, you'll never go wrong with a Grex airbrush, um, but uh, but Badger makes all kinds of kind of levels of of airbrushing. But air, um, airbrush is one of those things that you really don't want to cheap out on. You want a decent one that's going to last. You if you're going to spend money on an airbrush, what I am going to do is I'm going to go back in with a sepia wash, probably a little bit of a a watered down one. And I'm going to uh, bring those colors back down on the head. I don't like how kind of stark and contrasty it's looking. It's a bit much. You can see how the black on the wings really kind of added the effect I was looking for. Yeah, see this sepia wash right here is uh, really doing a lot to kind of close up that. Um... There we go. Look at that. Yeah, it's bringing it back down. And um... here we go. All right. Cool. Now you're still getting the the look and the and the. Uh... The effect but it just brings it all back together when that dries it'll look real nice all right well folks it's getting to that time uh, we weren't able to finish the Griffin tonight but uh, he's looking super great let me see if I can get my other camera working here give me one sec Uh, once again, guys, make sure that you um, you check us out on our live stream this Monday uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we'll be playing D&D &D, uh, through 5th uh, Edition through the uh, Storm King's Thunder campaign. I'm really excited about that. Uh, it'll be pr really great and fun. Um, also, uh, make sure that every other Monday, so not this Monday, but the following Monday... We'll be doing a uh, live stream tutorial. Hopefully Joel will join us for that one again. We had a lot of fun painting the troll last time around. Uh, can't get my other camera working here. Sorry, folks. And uh, and then also, this Sunday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, we will be doing a live uh, painting tutorial with uh, Nate from... You know what we'll do? We'll just do this. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we'll be doing a live painting tutorial with Nate from WASD20. Definitely um, tune in for that. We're going to be painting some bandits from the WizKids uh, Noser's Marvelous Miniature line as well and having just a, a ball doing that. Uh, thanks everybody for showing up uh, and, and participating. Uh, definitely spread the word. Take a look. We'll be uploading these onto all of our channels in HD as well uh, over the next couple of days. And I will also post final pictures when I've finished it up if you guys have any more questions. Thanks so much. You guys have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you Sunday night at the live painting with Nate, and then on Monday night at a live stream. Take care. Have a good one.